Welcome to It Is What It Is. I'm Sean Marie. And first off and foremost, someone messaged me and said, how can you do Sam Little, which is a fan pick, without speaking on George Floyd? And so I just want to say that he, what happened to him is still, I cannot bring myself to even watch the video. My husband had to watch it and describe it and stuff for me because like I just can't wrap my head around watching this poor man die and listen like I just can't so it makes me sad it just makes me too sad and racism truly just breaks my heart and it's not something that um I deal with and it's not something that I stand for and I am very, very, very blessed to live in the state in which I do and the town in which I do because that's not a big thing here. I mean, it may be, I'm just not aware of it. I was never brought up that way. I've never, ever in my entire life looked at a person and been like, I am better than you or anything or I've never been like that. So like racism to me is just mind blowing and I don't stand for it. And so I would sound extremely, extremely, extremely ignorant if I did speak on it and I'm aware of that. And so I did not not say anything out of disrespect or anything like that. Truly, I did it out of respect because I know how sensitive and how fucked up the world is right now. And so I just didn't want to seem like a stupid little white girl because that's exactly what I would have sounded like. And I just don't like that because I just, I just, guys, I just love and I just, it breaks my heart watching things on the news about other places in the world right now it truly just breaks me and so I just I didn't want to get into that because then you guys would just be like this girl's out of her mind so I just didn't so I just want to say once again RIP to George Floyd and I'm praying for his family but I won't speak on that what the, what's happening because for one I think people have a right to stand up for what they want to stand up for and if you're done getting picked on I mean do you boo fucking stand up for your shit and that's what people are doing so I'm just going to let that be so anywho and I'm going to point this out again because everyone needs to know again I did not pick this it is a fan pick from my buddy off of Twitter. And so we're going to do it and we're just going to go with it. And I used Wikipedia and I used um, the Murder Squad, their episode on Sam Little. Because anybody who's listened to this before knows I'm obsessed with Paul Holes. Oh, I love that man so much. Um, so yeah, I used the murder squad and then the oxygen channel had a special on Sam. And so I watched that one and yeah, that's all folks. So let's dive in, shall we? Okay. Samuel Little was born on June 7th. That is today, 1948. And he is 80 years old, I believe, today, in Georgia. His mother, he claimed, was a street worker, so he did not know the identity of the Faja. Soon, his, soon after his birth, he, his family moved to Ohio, where he was mostly brought up by his Grammy. He attended Hawthorne Junior High School, where he had problems with discipline and academics and achievements 
And in 1956, he got convicted for breaking and entering into a property in Nebraska. He then was held in an institution for juveniles. When he was released, he moved to Florida to live with his mother in his late twenties. I'm not sure where in the lateness of the twenties. And at that time, he worked at various times as a cemetery worker. And I'm not sure what that means. Various cemeteries, various times as a cemetery worker. I don't know what that entails. I've always thought it was cool, but I've always wanted to work in like the mortician part of it. I thought that was cool. Like a cemetery worker, I'm guessing like a groundskeeper. I'm not sure what they do, what their occupation enlist. He claims that he was also an ambulance attendant, but unless they just let any motherfucker ride around in those, I doubt that. And he had said that when he began traveling more and more widely, he had more and more run-ins with the law. Shocking. Very true, though. He had been arrested in eight states for crimes including driving without, oh, driving under the influence, fraud, shoplifting, solicitation, armed robbery, aggravated assault, rape. Um, he claims that in prison, in one of his prison stints, in one of his prison stints, that he was a prized fighter, a prize fighter. And if anybody has seen Fight Club, that's what, like he would fight, get the monies. I'm not even going to lie. I always thought one of the, watching one of those would be pretty cool. Pretty brutal, but pretty cool at the same time. I'm not going to lie. Okay, in 1961, he was sentenced to three years in prison for breaking into a furniture store in Ohio. What is this dude in stores? Anyway, so in Ohio, he was sentenced to three years and he only did like two, like a toil, because he was only released in 1964. So he went in 1961. I don't know what, I'm going to say he did like two and a half. I'm not even going to say the full did three whole years. Um, but by 1975, he had been arrested 26 times in 11 different states. Now the crimes also included theft, assault, attempted rape, fraud, and attacks on the government officials. He is the definition of a person who you lock up and throw away the key to. You just lock him up. In 1982, he was arrested in Mississippi. Now in Mississippi, he was charged with the murder of 22-year-old Melinda Rose Lapu who had gone missing in September of that year. A grand jury decided to indict Little on the murder of Melinda. However, while under investigation, Little was transferred to Florida to be brought to trial for the murder down there of the beautiful 26-year-old Patricia Ann Mount whose body was found in September 1982. Oh my gosh. Um, the prosecution witness identified Little in court as the person who spent time with Mount the night of her disappearance. So, and due to the mistrust of the witness's testimony, he was acquitted. And by mistrust, I say that she herself was a street worker and so they said that it was not true, her words and everything else. That's why. Fucked up. A girl knows her girl. She knows. That should have been taken. We should have gone right here. Bam. In prison. Gone. I'm sorry. But if a homegirl says, that's the last motherfucker I saw my girl with, that's the last dude. Plain and simple. 
them ladies look out for each other. It's called respect and love. You know what I mean? They know. Ugh. Dumbasses. I wonder if people like this, like juries like this, um, I wonder if they sit back after, of course, they let this monster go and, like, he commits more crimes. I wonder if they sit there and they're like, well, yeah, mm -hmm. that could have been prevented. Yep. Just saying. Don't judge yourself or anything, but I'm just saying. Like I said, he was acquitted in January of 18, 1984. And the monster then moved to California, where he stayed in the area of San Diego. Heard they have a good, a good zoo there. Haven't been yet. In October of 1984, he was arrested for kidnapping, beating, and strangling. 24-year-old Lorraine Barnos, who survived. The cops rolled up on this encounter. Uh-huh. Rolled up on this. He thought she was dead. Thank God she wasn't. Ugh. Sorry, no, not her. The next woman I'm going to tell you about. One month later is when the police found him in the backseat of the car with an unconscious woman who was beaten and strangled. Same location. That's why I got him confused. As the attempted murderer. Sorry. Ugh, just. I got the two women confused. Same place, same scenario, but oh my god. I just can't even imagine. Can't even imagine. He was served two and a half years in prison for both of these crimes. California, wake the fuck up. Oh, man. Can you guys even imagine? Okay, so upon his release in February of 1987, he immediately moves to Los Angeles and commits more than 10 murders there. He was arrested again in September in September of 2012 on the 5th of the 5th of September. There we go. I was wondering what the hell the five was, the five and the arrow. You guys can't see it. I can. It means the 5th of September at a homeless shelter in Kentucky and was extradited back to California to face a narcotics charge. After which authorities used his DNA to establish that he was also the piece of shit who murdered Carol L Lorraine Lafour. Mm -hmm. She was killed July 13th, 1987. Guadal um, Guadalupe. She was killed September 3rd, 1987. A Papadaka, I think is her last name. Oh, fuck. I really feel bad. I hope I didn't ruin that. Guadalupe Apocadaca. I really think that's it. That sounds really familiar, but I hope I didn't. Like I said, she was killed September 3rd, 1987. And Audrey Nielsen Evert, who was killed on August 14th, 1989. All three women were killed and found later on the streets of Los Angeles. He was extradited to Los Angeles where he was charged January 7th, 2013. A few months later, the police said that Little had been, had began investigating, oh my God, his involvement in dozens of murders committed in 1980, which until then had been, just had never been disclosed. In connection with the new crimes in Mississippi, the La Pure murder case was reopened. Oh my God. In total, Little was involved, believed to be involved in, get this, 93 murders in the U.S. The trial of Little, of the murders of Ellen Ford, Nielsen, and Apapadaka 
began in September of 2014. The prosecution presented the DNA test results, the testimony of witnesses who were attacked by him previously throughout his criminal career. And on September 25th, 2014, Little was found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. On the day of the verdict, Little conducted... Oh, wait, hold on. On the day of the verdict, Little continued... There we go, not conducted. Continued to insist that he himself was innocent of all crimes against him. And when people were speaking to him, he was like, liar! And he was screaming in court, acting like a fucking fool. He really was. It was horrible. In... 2016, when he was serving his life prison there in California State Penitentiary in the Los Angeles County, he then later was like given a deal and was like, hey, tell us what you know. We move you so that you can live out your life not so miserably. Still be miserable, but not so miserable. So, his later confessions, this, these were given later on. This confession was given November 9th, 2018. He confessed that in 1996, he strangled Melissa Thompson. And on, on November 13th, he was charged with the 1993 murder of Denise Brothers in, ten, in Texas. After having confessed to the crime to the Texas Rangers in May 2018. So he was all like, I don't know. I guess Texas isn't so bad to like live out your life sentences from what I understand. In terms of that long of jail stints. I don't know. I'm not really good on the star ratings of the prison system. Um, he pled guilty to the murder of brothers uh, in December and received yet another life sentence. The te Texas District Attorney and Sheriff announced that on November 13th, he had confessed to a dozen murders and maybe had committed 90 across 14 states between 1970 and 2005. So he's starting to like open up and he's like, okay, 93, 90, like we might even hit a hundred. Who knows? And really, is he keeping track? Like tally? I don't know. I don't know how this works. I don't know how killers keep track of their kills. So on November 15th, just a couple, a couple days later, in 2018, the Russell County, Alabama district attorney, Announced that Little had told them in the last month confessing that in 1979 he murdered 23 year old Barbara Alexander, Ale uh, Alexander, whose body was found in Phoenix City on November 16th, 2018. Georgia sheriffs announced that Little had confessed to the 1977 strangulation murder of an unidentified woman and the 1982 strangulation murder of 18-year-old Fred Lana Smith. In the fall of 2018, Little confessed that in 1982, he murdered 55-year-old Dorothy Richards and that in 1996, he had murdered 40-year-old Denise McGregor and both bodies had been found in Louisiana. Oh my god. In November 19th, 2018, so once again, a couple days later, Mississippi Sheriff said that Little had confessed to strangling 26-year-old Julia Critchfield in the Gulfport area in 1978 and dumped her body off a cliff. What a worthless fucking piece of shit this man is. On November 20th, the next day, 
Mississippi law enforcement announced that Little had admitted to killing 46-year-old Nancy Stevens in 2005 and that the case would be presented to a grand jury in January of 2019. On November 21st of 2018, South Carolina authorities announced that Little had confessed to murdering 19-year-old Ella... Oh. Mm-hmm. Evelyn Watson, whose body was found near Fort Jackson in 1978. Little also confessed to having killed 20-year-old Rose, Rosie Hill in Florida in 1992. Sorry, I had to stop for a minute. I thought my kid was right outside my door and I was trying to pronounce the name. Stopped way longer than I needed to. Dead space. Two smackings. Get over it. Um, In November... On November, not in November, on November 27th of 2018, the FBI announced that the criminal program had confirmed 34 of Little's confession, of all of his confessions, 34 of them were accurate and was working on matching the remainder of his confessions to possible murder suspects. I mean, not murder suspects, murder victims. And s murder victims or suspicious deaths is what they had begun looking into from pretty much everywhere between his crime span. Um, they were working with a DNA, with his DNA too. So they did have his DNA. A lot of his murders were unknown. And so, like, the names were unknown. So we don't know exactly who they are. Um, Little began to make the confessions in exchange, like I said, out of Los Angeles to Texas, which one of his, that he had to, um, my God, I can't even remember. He had to prove to them that he was telling the truth. And that's why he started confessing because this dude may have been a horrible, 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 worthless piece of shit. But he also was a very smart man. He had like a photographic memory. He remembered a lot of stuff. He liked reliving, reliving the horribleness that he caused to these poor women. He really did. So like I said, he wanted a, can a transfer out of Los Angeles prison in which he would be which is where he was being held good god one included his confession to a previous cold case in pierce george's county maryland previously one of the two homicides in that county and one of them is an unidentified person so horrible in december 2018 he told them about the strangulation of Linda Sue Bart, Bart, 23. Um, her death was in May of 1981 in Kentucky. Um, her body was found May 5th, 1981 near U.S. Ro Route 86. One of Little's victims was identified in December as Martha Cunningham of Knox County, Tennessee, who was 34 years old when murdered in 1975. In May of 2019, Chattanooga, Ohio, pronounced, announced, not pronounced, announced that four counties, that four counts of aggravated murder and six counts of kidnapping that he admitted to killing Mary Jo Penton in 1984 and Rose Evans in 1991 in Cleveland. Both had been strangled and dumped. The body of Rose Evans, 32, was found on August 24th, 1991 in a vacant lot 
on East 39th Street. She left her hometown of Bingham, New York when she was 17 years old. She had been strangled according to the coroner. Um, I don't... They had to create a model of her skull to figure out what she looked like so that she can be identified. Oh, this type of stuff makes me so mad. But she remained unidentified until 1992 when they put her thumbprint in the FBI database and that's when they got a match. Little picked her up at a bar near East 105th Street. Um, he described her as short, a plump woman in her 20s with brown hair. He also confessed to killing another Cleveland woman in 1977 or 1978. He wasn't really 100% sure. The woman murdered in 1997 or 1998 was found in March of 1983. Ugh. I can't even imagine. According to the National Missing and Unidentified Persons, NamUs, she was likely black and somewhere between 17 and 35 years old. The woman's body had been dumped in a grassy slope near a fence in a woodland area just off the Interstate 271. Her body was found by a man and his dog. Ugh. Only her skeleton and some clothes and her jewelry remained. So he literally, you guys, just dumped these poor, poor beautiful women out like garbage. I just, ugh, what an asshole. What a piece of shit. Okay, Little had also confessed to killing one woman in Archon, two in Cincinnati. One of the bodies was dumped in Columbus, and one woman that he met in Columbus, he w was disposed of in Kentucky. Of the two women, he murdered in um, Cincinnati, one of them was identified as Ann Stewart, 33. Her body was dumped in Grove City. Stewart was last seen, she was last seen, in October of 1981. Sitting out of a cab at the General Hospital to see her sister who was in the hospital. She was killed October 11th. He killed the other woman between 1980 and 1999. He's not 100% sure. The Jane Doe was anywhere from 15 to 50. Doesn't really know. The date of her murder, he's not 100% sure. He is sure that she was black and slender and she wore glasses. And she lived over in the... Ryan neighborhood, I don't know, with a heavy female Hispanic. They, um, he left her beside a cigarette billboard in Ohio. On June 7th, 2019, he was um, implicated in Ohio for murdering two women there. Little had begun to, when he went to Texas, he got better art supplies. He found himself to be an artist, but he draws like a five-year-old child. And he started drawing these women. And I don't know what crack he's smoking in this prison, but he thinks that by these drawings of these five-year-old depictions of these women... That people are going to look at his drawings and be like, yeah, that's her. And they're just not good. Like, they're just not good. And they're having a very hard time identifying who these women may be. And just what kind of fucking sicko are you? What type of just... Mm, what kind of horrible fucking person? Okay, so we have Anne Stewart, who passed on October 11th, 1981... 
He confessed in 2019 in Ohio. Mary Jo, um, July 3rd, 1984, confessed 2019, Ohio. Carol Elford, July 13th, 1987. Body, I believe, was found September 25th, 2014, or that's when he confessed. That's when he confessed. In Los Angeles. Um, Guadalupe Apodaca, September 3rd, 18, 1987. In Los Angeles, California. Aubrey Nielsen, August 14th, 1989, Los Angeles, California. Both of those, the last three were all confessed on September 25th, 2014. He recalls a Jane Doe anywhere between 1980 to 1999, like I said, in Ohio. Rose Evans, August 24th, 1991, in Ohio. Denise Christ Christine Brothers, February 2nd, 1994, in Texas. According to the FBI, he has confessed to the murders of all of the following individuals. He has provided sketches, like I said, of 26 of them. All of these individuals have not been confirmed to be linked to him. We are not sure. He has just drawn pictures. And given what he believes is a depiction of them. So the first one is an unnamed white female in Homestead, Florida. In 1970 to 1971. He does not know her age. He just provided a picture of her. The next one is Linda in 1971 in Miami, Florida. A black female, approximately 22. He also provided a sketch of her. Marianne Marine, he's not 100% sure. 1971 to 1972 in Miami, Florida. Marianne is what I'm going to go with. A black transgender female, she was 18 years old. He also provided a sketch of her. An un unnamed black female, also in 1971 to 1972, in Miami. She possibly had connections to the Air Force. We don't know. Un an unnamed white female in 1972 in Prince George County, Maryland. She was anywhere between 20 to 25 he confessed his confession was matched to known a, to a known Jane Doe case around there and he did provide a sketch of her what he believes she looks like an unknown an unnamed unknown unnamed white female 1973 in Kendall Florida he believes she was 45 years old and from Massachusetts both 1973 victims described to be possibly have had maybe the first name of Sarah. Not sure. Sarah Brown, 1973, New Orleans, Louisiana. Not sure what she looked, what her age was, but she worked at a restaurant on Canal Street. An unknown unnamed black female 1974 in Savannah, Georgia. She was 22 or maybe 23. He also drew her. Another unnamed black female in Ohio. He's not 100% sure. He does know he dumped her body in Columbus, Ohio. He did provide a sketch to her. Emily, in quotations, the mid-1970s in Miami, Florida. A black female between the ages of 23 and 24. She possibly could have worked at the University of Miami. An unnamed black female, 1975, in Knoxville, Tennessee. She's around 25 years old. 
another unnamed black female in 1976 or 1977 in Wichita Falls, Texas. He's not sure of her name of her age. He disposed of her um, in an unknown state to be near its city. What the fuck? Unspecified. Oh, he didn't know what city. Sorry. Good God. The next one is Joe, 1976-1979 in Illinois. She's a black female. She's probably around 26 years old. May have been picked up in Missouri. So we're not 100% sure on this. And all these people are on NamUs. So what that is, is like if you give your DNA, which I recommend everybody do, if you give your DNA, okay, and you give it over and you give it to, there's a, I'm not a hundred percent sure I can get back to you, but there's like places that you can do like the genealogy shit. And if you check a certain box, they can put your DNA through like CODIS and nameless and nameless and all that shit. And you, your DNA can help be linked to like your third cousin, twice removed you know and you guys can help so I really believe everybody should and if you have missing family members that you guys have always heard about from these states give your DNA you never know you never know um an unnamed black female in Louisiana he is not sure of course again what her name is he thinks he also might have picked her up in Missouri Another unnamed black female in 1976 to 1979 or maybe 1993. He still is not sure. In Houston, Houston, Texas, he didn't know her age. He just remembered her face. Another unnamed black female in 1977 in McCoon, in McCoon Georgia. She was anywhere between 30 to 40 years old. He... Um, his confession did match an existing Jane Doe case, so there could be a link right there. Another unnamed black female from Mississippi in 1977, anywhere between 35 and 45. They possibly met in the Port Gulf, but he's not sure. Um, may have even worked in the shipyard. The confession did also match another Jane Doe case. Another, oh my God. Another unnamed black female in 1977 or 1978 in Ohio. He didn't remember her age. They're still working on the case. In June 2nd, 2019, she was Identified as a black female petite, somewhere between 20 and 25, 23 years old. He said he dumped her body down a glassy, a grassy slope near a fence in a wooded area off of Interstate 271 in Ohio. The body was found in 1983. On March 18th, according to the missing persons system, she is believed anywhere between to be anywhere between 17 and 24 years old. Another unidentified female between 1977, black female, and 1978 in Florida. He didn't know her age. He said that he might have met her in clear water. He's not 100%. Another unnamed black female in 1977 from Georgia. 28 years old is maybe how old he thinks she is. Another unnamed black female in 1980-81 in Georgia. He says she can be anywhere between 25 and 30. Another unnamed black female in Mississippi in 1988 between 1984. Maybe to be around 22 years old. Another black female in Georgia between 35 and 40. He also gave a sketch of her. Another unidentified, oh, sorry, not another one. An unidentified white female in 2000, um, not 2000, 
1982 in Louisiana. He's not sure how old she was. An unnamed white female in 1983 in Georgia. He believes that she was 26 years old and that she might have been taken from Griffin, Georgia. He's not sure. An unnamed female. He's not 100% on this one at all. In 1984 in Ohio. He says that he disposed of her body near Kentucky. He knows that much. An unnamed black female in 1984 in Georgia. Between 23 and 25, he believes she was a college student. An unnamed white female in 1984 in Kentucky. He's not sure. He says that he thinks he picked her up from Columbus, Ohio. Priscilla Boxer Jones in 1984 or the mid-90s in Arkansas. Um, he thinks that she was either 20 or 29. He says he picked her up in Tennessee. He did give her a sketch of her and uh, it did match a Jane Doe case. The family of her, her family recognized her sketch as a missing relative. A man named Anthony Jones, who also stated the sketch resembles his mother. And she was killed in 1997. He confessed that he killed her and this woman and dumped her body in the Mississippi River. What a worthless piece of shit. How fucking horrible of a person do you have to be? An unnamed black female, 1984, in California, anywhere between 18 to 23 years old. Another black female, 1984, in Florida. He's not sure how old she is. Another black female, 1984, in Florida. He does not know how old she is. Francis Campbell, in 1984, in Georgia. About 24 years old he asked her on a date to a bar and she said yes of course obviously um, her body was discovered in 1985 on top of a pile of, of, of debris of construction off the interstate um, interstate 516 they matched her description to a missing case in Catheheim County. I'm not sure. The grand jury indicted Little in December for her murder. An unnamed black female in 1987 in California. An all, another black female in 1987 in California. Another unnamed black female in 1987 in Los Angeles, California. He thinks she might have been 18 years old, 19 years old. Granny, 1987 in Los Angeles, California. Black, approximately around maybe 50 years old. Another unnamed black female in 1987 in Los Angeles, anywhere between 20 to 23. Another unnamed black female in 1987 in Los Angeles between 26 and 27. Another unnamed woman between 1987 and 1990 in Louisiana. He believes she may have been 24. An unnamed Hispanic female in 1988 or 1996. Anywhere between there in Phoenix, Arizona. He thinks she was in her mid-40s. And that she may have been native to the area. And so he's not 100% sure. Joanna Jones, 1994, Arkansas, 26. Alice, he's not sure if that's her name. That's in quotations. In 1990 or 91 in Los Angeles, California. A black female between the age of 40 to 45. Roberta in Ohio in 1991. Um, her age is unknown, but they are still working her case. 
um, an unidentified female, black female in 1991 in California. Between 20 to 22, he believes she may have been from San Francisco. An another unnamed black female in 1992, he's not sure about anything about her. Another unnamed black female in 1992. You guys, this is like literally, we're on, we're so fucking, this is ridiculous. This man's such a piece of shit. He didn't know anything about that sweet woman either. And that, an unnamed Hispanic female in 1992 to 1993 in Los Angeles between 24 to 25, he believes she may have been from Phoenix. Another black unidentified female from 1992 to 1993 from Arkansas. Nothing known about her. Another unnamed black female in 1996 in Los Angeles between 23 and 25 years old. T Money, and that's in quotation marks, in 1996 from Los Angeles, a black female 23 to 24. A white, unknown female, 1996, Los Angeles, California, between the ages of 23 to 25. Another unnamed, unknown black female, 1996, he believes she was 25 years old. And then Anne, in quotations, in 1997 in Arizona, a white female, her age is unknown, but he did provide a sketch for all of those poor women. Could you imagine being the worthless piece of shit who literally remembers all these poor women's faces going through his worthless little head? And it's insane, absolutely insane, to believe that he could even... Oh my God, I'm really like, I try, I'm trying not to cuss as much, but holy shit balls, guys, that's a lot of fucking murder and a lot of beautiful faces to remember. I hope these women fucking haunt him. I really hope that this man is just, I hope when he closes his eyes, it is just nothing but terror. Oh my God, I hope that's all he fucking feels is terror. He did have a long-term girlfriend though during all of these, all of this nonsense. She has since passed on to the other side. He supported both of them for years through his ship loft, ship, uh, shop lifting habit. He is now in a wheelchair. He has the diabetes and he has a heart condition. Oh no, how sad. We should help him. Oh no. And I'm going to post pictures of him now. And I'm just going to say when this man dies, I don't think there will be any sadness. I'm sure people want to look at his brain because I'm very fascinated. How do you live to be 80 years old and kill over 93, let's go 95, 95 women so far? And we're in states and everybody is like well shit we don't even know if we're done because like there could be lord knows how many more and no one even knew you know what i mean like think about that and this is going across the united states okay so across all these terrible things are happening and he's picking women that he believes no one gives two fucks about which is so untrue and that's what's so heartbreaking is this animal thinks that no one cares, but like there's someone sitting by the phone, just hoping and praying and wishing that this poor woman would call them. And now she's unable to because of this worthless piece of shit, but he picked street workers and women with 
drug problems. So he was able to point you out, like get you, like you went after the vulnerable. And it's just, ugh, I fucking hate men so much that think like this. You really think that those women are out there just to sell some booty because they think that's fucking fun for a Tuesday. Like, these are women. Like, they are people. They are mothers. They are daughters. They are sisters and cousins. And <sighs> they're valuable. Like, their lives are so valuable. And this worthless animal. And the best he can do is draw me up some shitty picture and be like, I might have killed your loved one. Good luck guessing. Ugh, what a fucking worthless animal. I can't even imagine. I'm sorry to Sam Little's family if you're listening to this and that hurt your feelings. But like really, I doubt you are for one because that'd be mind blowing. But I'm just like blown the fuck away. The f fact that back then law enforcement didn't speak and really didn't have a way to communicate from Texas to California. I mean, like, yeah, I guess there was, like, the letters and whatever, but not in, like, a quick thing. And, like, why the hell would Texas even think that California would know anything about their murders anyway? So just think about that. All that span, all that land. And he went unknown and unstopped for so long after all of those near get gets you know oh my gosh wow Kenny you did it again bud you found a good one you did it all right next listener one is open for grabs let's do it hopefully you guys like this and so what I do with the fan ones just so everybody's like, oh, it sounds like you're reading it for, like, the first time. It's not the first time. It's the first time I'm reading it, like, out loud. I obviously have read it in my head a million times. But I like to just kind of read it with you out loud. Because then, like, then I get it a little bit better. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I missed that part when I watched the thing. Oh, that's horrible. So you guys get, like, that reaction, too. So I don't know. I enjoy doing it the way I do it. So yeah, you guys, that's Sam Little. He was a chameleon, really. Like how trusting and I don't know. Like I assume that these women do, like you get a spidey sense, I'm guessing after so long that like you get that tingly like this dude's up to no fucking good feeling. And like I can't imagine being deceived like that and being that woman who's like, okay, I'm going to suck this weird looking fucking dude's dick real quick, make a quick 20 bucks, get the hell out of here. And you're wrong on your judgment and this dude's a complete fucking monster. Like, oh my God, that just breaks my heart. God, guys, I just, I don't like people who think they have control. And think they can play God. Mr. Little, you are not the G-O-D, you know. You're just worthless. And just... Mm, horrible. You're a horrible, horrible man. And I hope you had a horrible, horrible, horrible birthday. <sighs> Jesus. Okay. Well, I will catch all of you beautiful people on a Tuesday. Coming on up. So, until Tuesday, keep it classy. Have a good couple days. See you all. And please, 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 please go rate my iTunes. I've only had like 35, 36 people rate my iTunes. So just go do it for me. Be a pal. And on that note, you guys can follow me on Facebook and YouTube at It Is What It Is, a true crime podcast. And on Facebook at It Is What It Is. Oh, yeah, I already said that. Ha ha ha. On Instagram at It Is What It Is. 
pod 19 all together no spaces no nothing all together and on twitter and it is what it is what it is 208 because that's where i'm from and obviously i cannot speak and i must get off of here before i make an ass out of myself any longer i love all of you sleep easy peace the fuck out see you tuesday